Hey everybody, I'm Brett with FTO Nerd Talk and joining me today is Jermiel Lessy with Concrete Comics, um, writer and creator of Absolver. Jermiel, thank you so much for being here. Um, thanks for having me, man. Really appreciate it. Yeah, well, this week, um, we are loving it. It's going to be concrete all week this week. We're interviewing all the creators and um, having a special treat planned for Wednesday, too. And so we are just excited to have you guys on. Um, I don't know if you know it, but concrete was my first um, when you guys had the, I think it was like five or seven dollars for the digital download bundle. Um, that's the first indie comics that I bought. I, I had had some, but th they had been given to me. And so concrete was really my step into um full plunge into the indie world. And so I am um, fanboying a little bit with you guys this week and just loving that we can have you guys on. I mean, appreciate it. I'm glad we could be a part of the origin story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us a little bit about yourself. What's your background? Well, um, as far as, um, you know, I was born from Trinidad and Tobago. Okay. So i um, currently live in Jersey. Um, for a long time, I was, I, you know, I've, I've been a part of the whole, I would say, I wouldn't say artistic community, you know, but the drawing, coloring, writing poetry, performing poetry, um, even the dancing at one point. And, um, and as far as my comic book life and being here right now, it's really my father that introduced me to comic books. Awesome. But he was a big fan of it growing up and, you know, he brought me all in. So <laughs> I'm here today because of that. So what's your dad's favorite comics? Now, his favorite hero uh -huh. is Thor. Thor, wow. He loves Thor. So, <laughs> That's one I always had a hard time getting into. I don't know why. Yeah, um, me too. I just... <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. hilarious. So, it, was your first comic book a Thor book, or do you remember your first comic book that you got? Honestly, Honestly, the, the the most memorable comic book series for me was The Death of Superman in uh -huh. early stages, you know? Yeah. yeah. So that's what um, really got me into it. But what, what really made me, what really made me want to get into comic books was Spawn. Um. So it was Spawn. But if I had to, it, it, was, it was really the comic books. And prior to the comic books, it was just the movies. You know, Tim Burton, Batman, um, yeah. Rocket. There, Superman movies with Christopher Reeves and you know Robocop, Terminator, Predators, all of that. Yep, <laughs> got yep. So yeah, those good '80s and early '90s storylines. Right, right. That's awesome. So, what are you reading right now? What comic books do you continue to read? Um, right now I'm actually rereading the Spawn run. Nice. Um, I'm loving the whole Power Rangers and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Mm -hmm. I think it's a fantastic read. Um. I haven't touched the the Thor. Um, I picked up a couple of Thor books. <laughs> One became um, Galactus Herald. I haven't uh -huh. started reading it yet, but I, um, I've, I've got them. Uh, and on the, um, the Red Hood, what's it called again? Um, when he left Batman. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about, but I can't recall the title. I'm yeah, horrible yeah. at stuff like that, titles and yeah, names and too, stuff. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. So what inspires you about comics and i guess more specifically what inspired you to create your own comic because a lot of us just love comics right like i love comics I, I don't think i would be cut out to ever write a comic book so why you did it and did it successfully so what inspired you to do that um first what i love about comics you know any medium that allows you to escape your reality mm -hmm. is is perfect you know you know, we all live in a real world. We all understand the climate of what's going on, whether it's today or stuff that happened yesterday or may happen mm -hmm. tomorrow. But, you know, it's it's a great escape. It's, you know, I don't think you're ever too, you shouldn't, you shouldn't ever get to a point where you're too old to utilize your imagination. And when yeah. you read the story, you put your, you immerse yourself into that character. And that, Im that immersion helped me want to, you know what, I want to do my own. I want to create my own story. Yeah. And then, and uh, so the push now was really being able to tell my own personal story from my personal perspective, my understanding. And, you know, it's really, I think that for me, the most fascinating part about creating a comic and writing is the creating part. Yeah. You know, I know a lot of people talk about the completed project, but I look at that like breathing, you know, it, it has to get completed, but the, 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 you know, it's like when you have one idea and you realize all the spider webs that connect from that one point and it's just the whole creating and the designing and 
and me wishing I could tell you what's going to happen next, you know, that's, uh -huh. that's what really has me hooked. I can get that. I can totally get that. And I can see that. I, I, I don't create my own comic books, but my, my day job is in um, creative design and, and communications and PR and stuff. And right, yeah, right. that just, you're right. There is something addicting about that creative process. Right. That's right. awesome. So ultimately, I guess, how did you get connected with everyone else in Concrete? Because you guys are, aren't all in the same city right now, at least. And right. how did Concrete Comics come about? Well, you know, I, I, I started my journey with a close friend, a once close friend, and want to create comic books. But we can never just get past the first two, three pages of anything we try to do. Mm -hmm. uh, and um so in my search and wanting to do this, you know, I bumped into the indie community uh -huh. and then, you know, I asked a couple of questions, how to get started. Of course, a lot of people does not want to give you the answers nope. or they give you vague answers and stuff like that. So um, I ended up joining this indie community and it was real good. And the person that owned that was in charge of it, he was, he didn't necessarily have enough time to focus on helping me personally. Cause he was doing so much for everybody else. Mm -hmm. And then, so while within that group, I connected with Onaji Rouse, mm. you know, and he and I was the only one out of this cold. That's what it felt like. Uh -huh. I don't want nobody to take it the wrong way. It just felt like me and him was like, you know what? This guy doesn't have enough time for us. We're going to do this on our own. Yeah. And based on what we learned from being a part of that, so we set out to do our own thing. And then I just saw this cool, one day I just, in my research and looking for people, I saw this cool character. You know, he was blue with the hoodie on. I was like, okay, this character looks nice. And he was fighting some villain. <laughs> so I contacted the person like, yo, did you draw this? I'm looking for my own artist. Uh -huh. He's like, no, but this is my character. So then, you know, we, we exchanged, you know, um, positive reinforced by each other's characters and the looks and stuff like that. And then that person happened to be Lonzo star. So, you know, so from there, it just grew to this great, you know, um, it started off as us talking about a possible crossover. Right. And that crossover became, yo, I got an idea, his universe, my universe. And we just came together, you <laughs> know, and we became like best friends. That's like my brother now. And, um, and then we're always building concrete. You know, we try to work with certain people at the beginning. That didn't work out. So in our rebuilding, we're like, you know, we kind of need somebody else. You know, this is a, this is a team effort. Right. So, you know, somebody had hit him up to join. So I was like, well, I got somebody too. So I call Onaji. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, Onaji, this is what we're doing over here. <laughs> you know, the Onaji came over and be kind of skeptical. You know, I don't blame him. Right. You know? But then, you know. Once that family unit was created, boom, this is how we got, this is where we, this is where we got, you know, so yeah, that's, that's how awesome. it connected, yeah. That's awesome. So, and, and we are hearing from all those creators this week, depending upon when we air this particular interview, we'll hear from Anaji, we'll hear from Lonzo, we'll hear from Daniel, like, and just have all you guys on talking. It's just, um, it's awesome to see like people come together and start to create something really, really cool. Yeah. Um, really cool. So Absolver, I got my print copy here. I also have it in digital. Um, right. <laughs> I've bought it twice. Um, Appreciate you. No problem. Absolver is really cool. Um, and I say that um, I've devoured a lot of comic books, especially recently, and interviewed several people. But Absolver is really a unique take on kind of an old story, I guess. Uh, the yeah. heaven kind of hell. But he's a mezzo, and so mezzo kind of means, what, like halfway in between? Um, and that's where he's at. He's, he's in the middle. Um, right. And so I don't want to give too much away because I want people to go buy issue one and then support issue two whenever issue two comes out. But um, tell us, tell us about Absolver. Let's break them down. Where'd you get the idea? What's happened so far and what might be happening next? All right. So I had this, I created this hero. Like it's my brainchild, you know, like my whole concept of my universe started with this one particular hero. Mm -hmm. But when I joined that particular group, I was telling you about, I didn't want to give them my, Right. You want to protect your brain child. You know <laughs> so I'm like, all right, I'm going to just go with Absolver. Uh-huh. He was just sitting there. But Absolver's journey started because I knew I always wanted to tell the quote unquote Ghost Rider spawn story. 
Mm-hmm. That's what it always was. So I created Absolver. Originally, he was called a Vanquisher. And I just knew, I'm going to tell you his original origin story. You know, this kid yeah. was just driving with his family. Um, they died in his car accident. And then he ended up in limbo, now known as, the, uh, I'm going by Oblivion. Mm-hmm. And they asked him, you know, you can go back in time and save your family and such and such. But you got to be, become, you know, my mercenary of uh-huh. sort, the spiritual realm. That was the original story. And, you know, but then one night, you know, just being home, watching the Trayvon Martin case. Mm. You know, and when when George Zimmerman got off, mm-hmm. you know, I just had this vindictive, this vindictive nature yeah. of myself, and so I wanted to create a hero. But for some reason, when as soon as I opened up my notes, I landed right on Vanquisher. I was like, <laughs> I was like, you know what? Okay. I'm gonna change the origin story here, and that's why I, that's why. So originally, Vanquisher um the vanquisher of vengeance and i was like uh-huh. that's pretty v so i did my research <laughs> and i found that vanquisher was being utilized in the spawn books i'm like oh, oh i definitely can't go yeah. with that <laughs> so and then he had his ability name where he absolved people mm. so i was like you know what i made the name absolver and i, I changed that. the name to vanquish to the name of that ability to vanquish um and that's how it stuck so fast forward i was looking at all my characters i wanted to put out there and to be honest with you, not that Absorber was my least favorite, but he was mm-hmm. what I quote. In, in the, um, when you're doing spoken word mm-hmm. and open mics, there's always this thing called the, the, the sacrificial lamb. Mm-hmm. The person that breaks the ice for everybody, get the crowd in the mood. So Absorber was my sacrificial lamb out of all my characters. The only one, the only one, if somebody was to steal from me or take, because I didn't understand the business, I could... I could afford to lose my sacrificial lamb. <laughs> and, <laughs> you know, so, and then Absolver, and then from there, you know, mix aside how I met Lonzo, yeah. and today that's where he became. So now he's like my number one. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome, man. That's right. so cool. I can definitely see the Spawn and the Ghost Rider influences there now. And um, it, it, is a, it is a really good book. It is a really good book. Um, oh, I was cool. rereading it just a little bit ago. Um, and so I just diving back in and um, it's, it's such a well-written book. Um, and what I'm hearing is that you have lots of notes so we can probably expect more characters coming down the pipeline at some point too. Um, yeah. You know, <laughs> I want to get to the point whereby, you know, if somebody wants to write, they can write, you know what I'm saying? Cause I can only focus so much time and energy on, right. you know, on writing. So you know, like we got, I got synopsis, notes, everything. Went, but there's a, there's a ton of characters. There's a lot of characters and events going on in the Absolver universe itself. Even the, the last character in the back of the book. I'm, yeah. You know, um, he plays a big deal. He's a, he's a specific hero on his, by himself. Okay. So, and it, it, it's, it's deep. You know, yeah. even David has a story to tell. You know, it's, 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 it's there's a lot. That's awesome. So who's the artist on this? Cause you said you're not, you're not an artist. So the art in this is really great. Who's your artist on these? Um, the artist is Hakeem Adin. Mm-hmm. And the colorist is Brian Ofello, I believe. Um, Very cool. I can't remember. Yeah. Um, yeah. I designed it. You know, I could draw. Uh-huh. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I just, you know, I just appreciate, I just appreciate everybody else's art more. And then it's almost like, you know, I don't want my book to be a burden to myself. I also want to be, I want, I want to be surprised. I love when I receive those drawn pictures. I'm like, oh my God, this is, <laughs> I can't believe did this, you know, it looks amazing. Um, I try to give every artist I work with, uh, being an artist, I understand artistic e- e- expression. Yeah. You know, so I, so when they draw it, I tell them like, listen, even though this is what I say, this is this is kind of what I want, but I need you to express yourself because you really get the best work out of the artist like that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, this is for my personal understanding, you know. Yeah, you're um, not the first person I've heard say that that trust your artist. Trust your artist. Yeah, you, because you, 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 Yeah. Yeah, you have to. You know, even when I'm doing some of these coloring commissions, you know, I understand color theory. 
So, you know, to a non-colorist, you know, the picture looks good, but to me, the, the light, the light reflection, the bounce, like, you know, there's a lot of things also. Right. I cannot, so I, I, I enjoy clients that allow me to, you know, really utilize the rules, mm -hmm. the rules, you know, so these artists have their own rules and they, and they understand what they understand. They know what they know. So I let them, and I, and I'm, and I, and I say, you know, even though I'm paying you, you know, this is a partnership, feel free to express right. yourself. Let me know so I can understand why you did that, you know, yeah. and it's always worked out well for me that way. That's cool. That's cool. So um, at some point, there's going to be an issue too. Um, right. Will Concrete um, be doing a Kickstarter or an Indiegogo campaign? Can you tell us anything about that yet? Or are you not, not close yet? Um, the most I can tell you is there will be an update on that pretty soon. Okay. And just know we have a lot for you guys coming down the road. That's, nice. all I, that's all I'm allowed to say. I okay, say. okay, okay. So follow Concrete Comics if you're not already and pay attention. Something's coming. Right, um, right. Any, any crossovers coming down the line? Um, as far as within Concrete, outside Concrete. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, within Concrete, definitely. Like okay. I said, we, we are a family, you know. Um... We are a family and we definitely work well with each other. So there's no way there's no crossovers. I mean, there's cross, but I think Lonzo and I planned a crossover acolyte and I was over long before we even decide to really, this whole thing started off a crossover. <laughs> That's you know, awesome. and, and nothing goes into the trash. You just got to get updated, you know? So, <laughs> um, so definitely just look out for that. Um, outside of concrete, as far as absorber goes, I don't know. I don't, not this, I don't want nobody to take it the wrong way. It's yeah. just hard for me to find the perfect crossover with Absolver because yeah. he's not your hero or a villain, you know? Right. And if he's going to be a villain in your story, he, he got to be done right. Yep. And then in order for him to be a hero, he has to be put in the position to be the hero. Right. You know, so he's not just, he's not a Batman and Superman meet up and don't like each other for 10 seconds and now they got a common enemy. I was over doesn't work that way. So, you know, it's just um He doesn't I, bond with somebody now. over the name Martha and all of a sudden they they're right. best friends. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. You know, I was, I was over is really as he grows in the story, I want the fans to grow with him. Nice. You know, it, it's it's mm -hmm. it's all about growth at Absolver and and so until he gets there, it's kind of hard to match up with anybody. I'd rather, I'd rather him be villains in somebody's story, if that makes sense. I'd rather yeah. him be a villain. It does. Yeah, I get you it. Know? I get it. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Um, and and so the, and I, I kind of asked that question to you, but this past week or so, there's already been a mini crossover in the mini issues. Acolyte and Odina ended up in the same mini comic together. So I, I should have known. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Um, I give all credit to Alonzo for that one. He has a he has a funny one. He has a good one with um. Well, I can't say too much. I'm sorry. Yeah. But he has another one coming. <laughs> all right. All right. <laughs> so uh, you've already commented on this, um, but I, it just sounds like you guys on the concrete team just really get along well. Um, what's what's your favorite part of working with a team that's kind of creating this universe? Um understanding that our disagreements is not over pride or anything crazy it's just that we all want to be at this destination and we're trying to get there the best way possible and the mm -hmm. right way you know we really look out for each other you know when i can tell you when i'm feeling down or out or i'm questioning certain things you know just like family just like having brothers there you know daniel or naji and lonzo they all look out you know, it's just mm -hmm. knowing somebody has your back, you know, mm -hmm. when it feels like everybody else is not paying attention to you or you're not getting invited to the party, you know, you got your family back home. Yeah. You know, and we've always had that mentality. That's the same way we run concrete. You know, we put ourselves in a position whereby if it's if our stuff is funded or not, we're still going to release it. Mm -hmm. you know, that's it's not it's not a it's not a crowdfunding or bust with us and that's just how we we utilize you move we're, we're all it's just different personalities like literally and we just found a way and we created a perfect 
the perfect soup, <laughs> you know. <laughs> That's and, awesome. and, it, and it works for us. And it's and I know the outside world is like, yo, we're closed in, we're boxed in. It's only a boy, you know, who they let in club. But it's, you know, Lonzo and I had two bad experiences with working with the wrong set of people. Mm-hmm. And not that they were bad people. It's just that, you know, where we was heading, they was looking like this. And when we're trying to, when we're trying to do something together like a group, mm-hmm. everybody started bringing in their own individ- individuality. You know what I'm saying? We need to do this and do this and then. So that didn't work for us. Right. And so right now we on we we like working people that understand that yo, creating comics is a passion. Mm-hmm. It, it, you're you're not gonna become millionaires off of this overnight. You know, it, yeah. it like every morning Lonzo and I get on the phone from 6 30 to whatever, talking comics, concrete comics, wow. business. We sneak in clowning and trolling each other here and there, <laughs> but it's always business and comics with us. And it's, it's a passion. We, you know, if, so, and, and I'd rather take somebody, I, I speak for myself, rather work with somebody who's not as talented as writing, mm-hmm. but passionate and want to learn versus somebody that is, and all they talk about is money, 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 money. Right. Because it's a marathon for us. Mm-hmm. it's a marathon we got a, a goal and we're trying to get there we need you know so yeah that's just what it is you know that's yeah. we're, just, we're just a family that's awesome and i'm, and I'm always awesome. getting a little brother i don't know why but <laughs> I'm <always a> little <laughs> brother. <laughs> well speaking as a little brother it's uh, probably the best spot to be i mean you know <laughs> not in this family <laughs> <laughs> that's funny <laughs> um So there's a lot of um, black indie comics right now. A lot. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel like we're entering almost like a second golden age of black creatives in the comic field. And there's a lot of great stories out there right now. Um, Do you have any in particular in that genre that you're following that you want to give recommendation shout outs to? You know what? Had the the slightest chance to um, work on JB's book, Hero. Yeah. Yo, I'm a, I'm a, I am a total fan of that concept and idea. Yeah, that's a really <clears> cool like, story. I'm like, yo, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> you know, right? um, it's it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a dope concept and idea. And I watched, I actually watched y'all interview, yeah. and when he broke it down, I was like, man, that could, I even try to call him so I could congratulate him on the interview because when he didn't pick up, he's like, why is this guy calling me? <laughs> <laughs> but um <laughs> yeah that that was one good one um minds to avenge i love that story mm. you know but i think robert jeffrey wrote it yeah if i had you know it was well written the artwork is beautiful it just it's just, it just a perfect blend of you know of that um one to look out for is chris williams prophet you know, I had a chance of hearing what's going on in that world, and it's it's supposed to be dropping soon. I think, I think that's going to be a real dope read. Um, but definitely, he ruled because I just love the concept. I wish yeah. it was all mines, you know. That he <laughs> much. So it's, I, I, it's I, really cool. It's yeah, really cool. I, I just gotta um, be a fan and follow it and read it. I'm trying to get the <laughs> physical copies real soon. Yeah, I just got issue one physical, and um, it's it's beautifully printed, beautifully done. Right, right, right. So yeah, that's that's my that, that would definitely be my goal too. Very cool, very cool. Um, so that that question that you said sometimes people avoid. Um, what advice would you give others wanting to get into the comic industry? Um, be passionate about it. Be very passionate, and whatever it is, whatever your reason for doing it, just understand that it's a marathon. I, it, you know, if you're doing it for money, you're doing it because it's a hobby. You're doing it because you're trying to get your name out there or express whatever the reason. Understand that it's a marathon and you got to be passionate about it. Um, you just have to have a passion about it. It's really a grind. You know, not, not, not like a long physical grind, but, you know, you know, depends on what you perceive as perfection. Right. You know, it, you know, I would start with one artist and because the artist can't really captured my vision i would have to move on and that is no disrespect to the artist it's just that i put myself in a position like you know what 
I loved his art and I jumped right into it without doing any research. Like, can this, can he capitalize what I'm trying to convey and stuff like that? So, um, like, you know, even with Absolver, you know, I ran to that issue and I told the, I told the artist, you know what, it's not you, but I have this one character I've been working on. I said, listen, now that I understand what you're trying to do, mm-hmm. this guy is perfect for you. So, um, you know, it's sacrifice. I'm still, it's still learning. You should be willing to learn every day. Mm-hmm. And as far as, you know, the fun part is the creating, the writing and all of that, but definitely understand the business aspect of it. And if you don't want to, you know, get somebody that handles your, your weaknesses, you mm-hmm. know, you don't have to do it by yourself, you know, have put, put together the team. Like I said, you know, I, I would have been here without concrete, but maybe two more years down the road, but with right. concrete, with my brothers, I was able to get here at a fast pace, like a real fast pace, you know, and, and, you know, you're nothing without your team and you definitely have to be passionate about it. Awesome. Yeah. Well, tell everybody, um, Jermiel, where they can find Absolver and the rest of the Concrete Comics app. Um, definitely, you can find Absolver, Rate the Vengeance on IG, Facebook. Um, you can go to our website, www.concretecomics.com, Concrete with a K. And, you know, just, re- just reach out, you know, reach out. We're, we're friendly, you know, <laughs> we're friendly, we're pretty nice. <laughs> that's awesome well thank you again for taking the time to be here today like i said all week this week it's all concrete comics and we are talking with all the creators and um tune in if you haven't bought their books yet the bundle i think is still available for digital get that yeah. bundle to get your feet wet but t- you're going to want to order the physical copies like i did after you read the digital get your physical copies and i can't wait for you guys for all this coronavirus stuff to be over and you guys can all show up in atlanta and do a signing for me so you know hey, definitely we was matter of fact we were supposed to be there for I juneteenth know. i know <laughs> so um but speaking of juneteenth you know we have a. Uh, if you don't mind me giving out a quick shout out yeah um Juneteenth, we're releasing uh, our preview for a story that's dear to my heart that I've been working on for a couple of years, and it's called The Black Confederacy. Nice. And all you got to do is subscribe on the Concrete Comics website, and then, you know, you'll be able to see the, the free preview that's coming out. Um, and it just, it, just, it just worked out perfectly, because as you can see, it was advertised in the, the Absolver it was the yeah. first issue. Yeah. And, and we planned it last year to be released to show the preview this year and you know it just it just worked out that way yeah. so um definitely yeah check it out right, cool. well thank uh, you again for taking the time today to um talk and just to give us insights into Absol- absolver and concrete comics it's been a lot of fun jamil thank uh, you thank you brett really appreciate you all right we'll talk to you guys later all right